The USS Theodore Roosevelt arrived Thursday in Vietnam. The Theodore Roosevelt Carrier Strike Group left San Diego on January 17 for deployment in the Indo-Pacific region. The strike group also includes the guided missile destroyers USS Russell, USS Paul Hamilton, USS Pinckney, USS Kidd, and USS Rafael Peralta. She became the second U.S. aircraft carrier to make a port call in Vietnam since the fall of Saigon in 1975. Viewers may note that the USS Carl Vinson supercarrier made the first historic visit to Da Nang in March 2018. The carrier was accompanied by the guided missile cruiser USS Bunker Hill for this visit. According to a 7th Fleet news release, the warships sailed into Da Nang, where they were met by Vietnamese and U.S. government and military officials, including Admiral John C. Aquilino, commander of the U.S. Pacific Fleet, and U.S. Ambassador to Vietnam Daniel Crittenbrink. This visit marks 25 years since the two former rivals normalized their diplomatic relations. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes why China should fear USS Theodore Roosevelt docking in Vietnam. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by the free-to-play military vehicle combat game War Thunder. We talk a lot about military vehicles on this channel, but what about trying them out for yourself? In War Thunder, you can choose from more than 1,200 playable vehicles from the 1930s to the 1990s and go to battle on more than 80 theaters of war. You can fly aircraft, helicopters, drive tanks, and command ships of all types and sizes, which have been carefully recreated from their real-world counterparts. It's available as a free download on PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One with cross-platform support. So grab your friends and give it a try. All viewers of Defense Updates that register using the link in the description below will also get a free premium tank, aircraft, or ship and three days of premium account time as a bonus. China claims almost 90% of the South China Sea through its so-called Nine Dash Line map. It says it has indisputable sovereignty over the area. The wide-reaching demarcation was rejected by an arbitral tribunal at The Hague in July 2016. Vietnam, along with the Philippines, Malaysia, Brunei, and Taiwan have disputed these claims. The route is significant as about $5 trillion in trade through shipping passes each year. The sea also has alleged 11 billion barrels of untapped oil and 190 trillion cubic feet of natural gas. China has tried imposing a unilateral decision as per which all ships and aircraft navigating in the area need to identify itself to the Chinese military. The Chinese Navy has heckled vessels of smaller nations like Vietnam several times in the last couple of years. The USS Theodore Roosevelt visit indicates the U.S. Navy will continue to play a major role in the Pacific and the South China Sea when it comes to pushing China back. Vietnam, by accepting the port call, has clearly asserted its support of the U.S. Navy. USS Theodore Roosevelt is a Nimitz-class supercarrier. Nimitz-class aircraft carriers were designed to be improvements on previous U.S. aircraft carriers, in particular the Enterprise and Forrestal-class vessels. All ten Nimitz-class aircraft carriers were constructed between 1968 and 2006 at Newport News Shipbuilding Company, Virginia, in the largest dry dock in the Western Hemisphere. USS Theodore Roosevelt is the fourth ship of her class and was commissioned on the 25th of October, 1986. She's named in honor of Theodore Roosevelt, the 26th President of the United States. Nimitz-class supercarriers are some of the largest vessels constructed. USS Theodore Roosevelt has a displacement of 100,000 tons and an overall length of 332.8 meters or 1,092 feet. To give viewers a perspective, it's about three football fields long. USS Theodore Roosevelt is powered by two A4W nuclear reactors kept in separate compartments. These power four propeller shafts that can produce a maximum speed of over 30 knots or 56 kilometers per hour. As a result of the use of nuclear power, the ship is capable of operating continuously for over 20 years without refueling, 
and is predicted to have a service life of over 50 years. Practically, it has unlimited range and endurance. USS Theodore Roosevelt, being a Nimitz-class supercarrier, possesses a multitude of different radars, including electronically scanned array 3D radars. It's equipped with 16 to 24 RIM-7 Sea Sparrow. RIM-7 Sea Sparrow is a U.S. ship-borne short-range anti-aircraft and anti-missile weapon system, primarily intended for defense against anti-ship missiles. Its range is 19 kilometers or 11.8 miles. Close-in weapon system CIWS duties are performed by Phalanx and RIM-116 rolling airframe missile. The RIM-116 rolling airframe missile, also known as RAM, is a small, lightweight, infrared homing surface-to-air missile used primarily as a point defense weapon against anti-ship cruise missiles. The missile is so named because it rolls around its longitudinal axis to stabilize its flight path, much like a bullet fired from a rifled barrel. It has a range of 9 kilometers or 5.6 miles and a speed of Mach 2. The Phalanx weapon system is a rapid-fire, computer-controlled, radar-guided gun that can defeat anti-ship missiles and other close-in threats on land and at sea. It's a last-ditch defensive weapon and is designed to defeat anti-ship missiles and close-in threats that have pierced other lines of defense. It has a range of 2.2 miles or 3.5 kilometers and has a rate of fire of 4,500 rounds per minute. The USS Theodore Roosevelt has a 63.5 mm or 2.5 inch Kevlar armor over vital parts. Theodore Roosevelt and those Nimitz class carriers completed after her have slight structural difference from the earlier carriers USS Nimitz, USS Dwight D. Eisenhower, and USS Carl Vinson, and improved protection for ordnance storage in her magazines. The Nimitz-class supercarrier's main offensive force consists of the F-A-18 Hornet and the F-A-18 Super Hornet. USS Theodore Roosevelt can carry around 60 of these and will be the trump card when it comes to enforcing air dominance. These are twin-engine, supersonic, all-weather, carrier-capable, fourth-generation, multi-role fighter aircraft and can carry ground attack weapons as well as air-to-air -air missiles. The versatility of the aircraft can be gauged from the fact that on the first day of Operation Desert Storm, two F-A-18 Hornets, each carrying four 2,000-pound bombs, shot down two Iraqi MiGs and then proceeded to deliver their bombs on target. Apart from these fighter jets, USS Theodore Roosevelt has EA-18G Growler and E-2C Hawkeye. The EA-18G Growler is an airborne electronic attack AEA, aircraft. It's capable of electronic attack EA, and suppression of enemy air defenses SEAD, particularly at the start and ongoing early stages of hostilities. Northrop Grumman's E-2C Hawkeye is a carrier-capable AWACS aircraft. It's designed to give long-range warning of incoming aerial threats and has a secondary role of command and control. The flotilla of aircraft has enough firepower to mount a credible offensive against any Chinese misadventure. Viewers may note that China and Vietnam have seen several standoffs in the last few years. In July 2019, a Chinese survey ship, Haiyang DG-8, along with an armed flotilla, spent weeks sailing near the Vanguard Bank a maritime area well within Vietnam's exclusive economic zone. Admiral Phil Davidson, commander of the U.S. Indo-Pacific Command, remarked Tuesday on the growing importance of Vietnam's support of U.S. efforts to push back on Chinese hegemony. Davidson stated that Vietnam has been quite vocal and supportive of U.S. freedom of navigation operations near islands claimed by China in the South China Sea. It's important to note that the U.S. Navy sails ships close to islands claimed by China in a subtle show of force during those operations. He added that Vietnam is also chairing 
the Association of Southeast Asian Nations this year, thus taking the lead on negotiating a code of conduct with China for defined rules of the road for international air and sea traffic in the South China Sea. It's clear that Vietnam and the U.S. are on the same page, and there will be larger ramifications going forward. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting, and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.